Hi, and welcome to Accelerus for Events. I am Pete Poirello, here with Dave Petorek. Hi, Dave. Good morning, Pete. And today we are going to be talking about System Center Service Manager training options. And remember that you can always learn more about System Center Service Manager implementation and training at Accelerus.com. Dave, over to you. Great. Um, I think this is an important session because um, there aren't a lot of training options available yet for System Center Service Manager yet. Um, the tools being implemented at customers, we're implementing it and we're finding holes that we've uh, worked hard to fill. Um, uh, Accelerus, we do two things. We implement System Center Service Manager and we help uh, train people up uh, to deploy it, to operate it, um, to tailor it. So um, we're specialists in this um, and uh, we, on, on the implementation end, we've taken uh, over 10 years of implementation experience with a lot of different service management tools and apply it to the uh, uh, service manager product. So that's what we do. We do uh, run the gamut. We'll run proof of concepts for you. We'll stand up a production environment for you, um, et cetera. But we also have um, a specialty in the training space. Um, we think there's a need for, and we're seeing it in our clients, uh, for role-based, scenario-based training and, you know, modern ways of delivering that, for lack of a better way to say it, um, other things other than sitting in a classroom for uh, four or five days at a stretch, uh, listening to content that isn't necessarily 100% applicable to you in your role. So uh, in addition to that, we've got a whole set of um, proven ITIL and MOP offerings. This is important because when you think about service manager, it's a service management tool. Um, when you get down to configuration parameters, you need to understand the concepts behind the functionality. Um, and there's a whole host of decisions that need to be made uh, for the process and organization that lie outside the tool. Are we going to have a cab? Will we have a problem management function? You need to sort those things out or else the, uh, the tool functionality lies hollow. So we can help you with that. That's uh, something we're expert at. Um, what makes us different is we focus on outcomes, not the bells and whistles in the tool. Uh, we do have that organization and process expertise, as I said. Training expertise, it's not enough to have subject matter expertise. You need to be able to get things across to mere mortals. Um, we do that. And, and um, in addition, we're plugged into the community um, so that we can go deep where necessary. We can get help where necessary. Um, I think we think this is the best combination for you to, uh, to have a successful uh, implementation and uptake of service manager. In general, um, we have this slide for our training that we provide. This is just general criteria of what you look for in, a, in, a, in, a, in training. Actual better preparation to apply your role. I mean, that, that seems like it should be a no-brainer, but um, there's a lot of training out there that just covers features and uh, doesn't necessarily say, okay, you're the service desk manager. You are uh, the change management uh, process lead. Here's what you need to do with this in your role. So we, we work very hard to make sure that uh, material we present is, is role-specific, scenario-specific. Um, it should be easy to navigate. Um, a lot of the modern uh, tools allow you to, for example, uh, our CVTs, you can search, uh, you can expand and, and, and contract the, um, the navigation pane. Um, you close it, open it, depending on what you want to do. But that's, that's just uh, and, and cross-reference to uh, uh, source materials. Um, Expert mentoring is key. I think just-in-time delivery of this kind of uh, training materials is important and, uh, and having an expert to lean on just exactly when you could, could use the help. We found that with things like uh, setting up inbound, outbound uh, email for this product. Um, you know, you can read the documentation. We did the first, you know, seven times, you know, seven ways to Sunday, but you'll, you know, you're really getting a little bit extra uh, expert support that key points really helps. Um, just looking down this list a little bit more, we don't have uh, multilingual capability. Um, some people look for that. Our stuff is in U.S. English. We don't provide that uh, as a way of keeping costs down and because most of our customers are satisfied with U.S. English. Um, and then having a full line of offerings and, and, and flexible delivery options, that's important. We'll get into that. CBTs, VIL, e-learning, um, also courseware and the uh, traditional delivery. Having a, a lot of those in a la carte um, offerings, people look for that and we provide it. Okay? So those are some of the things. And here's our role-based training. If you look at the training that's available 
gener generically, there's a, there's a, there's a four-day course, five-day course. Um, it's packed with information. That information um, isn't broken out by role. So what we've done is we've uh, created our own offerings that are role-based, and they start with a foundation course. This is generally, if you're the service desk manager, the incident manager, um, you own problem management in your organization, you're going to need a foundation course. Um, uh, that's generically applied. The exception is for end users. They don't need that, but anybody in IT um, uh, needs that kind of training. And then let's look at what else we've got here in terms of uh, role base. Well, when you're planning and deploying, you're going to need some uh, information for the planning and deployment uh, leads. And typically, you've got an IT managers involved, project managers. Uh, you've got process leads and technical leads. That's typically what you see is in the deployment. Somebody's going to own the technology of standing up the, the architecture, hardware, software, network, database, virtualization, etc., cetera, um, and the, uh, laying down configuration parameters. Uh, uh, for the tools and databases, etc. And then somebody's going to own, you know, okay, you, for example, the, the, the list of the value drop downs, the drop down lists, uh, figuring out what we're going to do there. And if there's parameters that, that, you know, that are policy driven, like will we have emergency changes, what qualifies, that's what the process lead will drive out. And then there's a PM, you need to have a PM to drive deployment, transition, um, and uh, tailoring customization, extension, uh, and IT management needs to know what is this thing, uh, what's involved, are we on, are we tracking, so they need uh, some specific role-based training. So these three down here cover for planning and deployment um, for those three audiences, what they need to know, what they need to do, that sort of thing. In some cases, and this is why we break it out separately, um, you're going to want to implement complementary solutions. These are things like the ITGRC pack, um, Provence uh, Asset Management Pack, the Bay Dynamics uh, Reporting um, Solution, which is, you know, there's some really cool solutions out there. Um, you're going to want to do further uh, customizations with management packs and using the uh, Solution Development Kit. So um, that we, we bundle all that stuff in one. The, the reason for that is simple. Um, if you don't need it, you don't have to cover it. And we have the self-service portal uh, in SharePoint. Um, Typically, in the self-service portal, you have the standing up of those two portals, the tailoring of those portals. Um, in some cases, you, you have the choice of integrating it with uh, um, uh, the SharePoint. And typically, in the organization, somebody who, who knows a SharePoint designer or some other sort of web tool needs to, to uh, customize the portal to your look and feel. So we, we, we put all of that content here. This is something, you know, as I said, these are a la carte, so an administrator might want to look at this content as well. Um, it's just you can pick and choose. That's, that's, that's kind of a cool thing there. The next thing is, um, and this is very key, um, IT management and the Active Directory and Exchange leads need to understand and map and then instantiate with the help of the administrator, assistant uh, center service manager, and some of these other other folks, um, what are the roles, uh, the user roles in system center service manager, and how those map to Active Directory users and groups, and how those uh, further map back to um, the actual physical organization. So, if I got an organization and it's got a service desk, a service desk manager. There's a technical services function, an application support group, uh, IT operations with consoles and the data center, etc. How the heck does that map to our AD structure now, groups and users? And how does that map into user roles in uh, System Center Service Manager, as well as to, um, well, how does that go and map to workflows, queues, groups? Um, Drop you know, views, etc. Pete, I, I, I wanted to just uh, pull you in here and just ask you. You know, in my experience on engagements, that this is key. What do you see? You know, in this area yourself. In terms of you know mapping uh, users to what they need to see, what they need to be able to do. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and how critical it is to have an understanding and a mapping of the difference between. You know your your 
your, your board chart to your Active Directory users and roles to what you need to map in Service Manager in terms of user roles, groups, queues. Views. Well, the, in, in Service Manager, there, there are just a lot of things that you can get very granular in terms of who's got access to what. Um, and it does take a lot of thought. Um, there's no question about that. It's great that you can pull in um, a lot of things from AD, but I also feel like that's one of those given enough rope you can hang yourself type situations, and it does therefore require a lot of planning. And then specifically, as I just said, with user roles, you really do have to think carefully about who's going to use the system to do what, what you want them to have access to, um, what you want them to see, to not see. Um, that stuff really does have to be carefully thought about and planned in advance. Uh, much better to do it, I think, in advance. And therefore, you need to have a, a clear understanding of what you can and cannot do so that you're not making these decisions on the fly because I think if, if you do that, there's more chance that you'll be going back and fix things. Yeah. Uh, and, and you'll just have a, you'll have somewhat of a mess to clean up down the road. Yeah. So, as you can see, and this is why, if you look at the documentation for the product at this, at this stage, um, while it's comprehensive, it doesn't really pull us out and emphasize it. And we've, we've found in engagements it's, it's important to treat this. That's why we've broken this out for training purposes to say, okay, for the audience that needs to consider this, let's put a package together that helps them uh, crisply consider it for planning, uh, design, and then roll out and, and operations so that, so that they can quickly get through this. It, it can be really messy. So that's why we've done it. The next uh, role to talk about is this reporting and uh, SQL Server role. And uh, this training focuses on um, the setup of the data warehouse, uh, choice of parameters like grouping intervals, etc. cetera. Um, the, there's a stock set of reports. What are they? Um, helping the um, uh, person who owns this understand and figure out, uh, well, are you going to have scheduled reports? At what interval are you going to provide them to whom, to what end? Um, so, so just going through that and focusing on reporting the database aspects and all of these role, uh, the content here covers both planning and design and deployment and then operations. So, for example, in reporting, uh, just the considerations of the questions, are the stock reports enough? Do you want to look at other solutions like the uh, service manager dashboard? Um, and then also considerations for planning things like OK SQL Server environment, SSRS, where are you going to put things, what are the considerations for virtualization, for performance, for tuning, uh, what are the base um, specifications, minimum specifications for the product, what are recommended. So that, that's what's covered here. It's, it's a lot of stuff. And the content tends to be scattered um, throughout the documentation um, and not, um, not concentrated for decision and action, and that's what we attempt to do in our training materials. 